So sorry. You're fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is back to its old roots. Off color. Rebecca's getting drunk. It's Halloween. Yeah. I like always get so turned on Halloween. Like you, like seriously, Halloween is like my sh- shit. Yeah. Sorry, I got distracted. It's fine. Carry on. Okay, so it is that. What were we talking about? <laughs> Hey, 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 this is Off Color. We've been a little bit absent, but you know why? Because we've been on Facebook Live. What I really want to talk about today is something so important and so huge, uh, is that tomorrow is the presidential election in the United States. And so we got together via Zoom. It's a mystical, magical experience. I still think we're all going to die, but okay. So you're listening, if you're listening to this, I'm actually dubious that anyone's listening to this right now because it's election, it's the night before election day. I feel like people are getting their ballots turned in, getting out the vote. They probably don't have time for an uh, off-color sesh, sesh. but you know what? I mean, I hope people listen to it. I I hope when we put it out, because it's been a while since we've put out an episode, so... You know. That's true. That's true. So you're listening to the show before the show, which is <laughs> I I like to say that I like I stole that from that podcast. All right, so let's get into it. Twenty twenty elections. Yeah. Uh so we we did some live episodes um that were a lot of fun. <laughs> Yeah, I had a I had a pretty good time. I had a better time than I thought I would have. Yeah, to be we did perfectly two, honest, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was really good. We did so. two episodes of What what did you get the most out of doing those lives? I got the satisfaction of feeling like I was doing something rather than just waiting for the inevitable. So many people in America are are feeling that at this time. Like Halloween, this is like a, a combination of our Halloween and election, like all in one episode, okay? So today's Halloween. If you went out and took or treating, fuck you. Like I think that's like some bullshit. I don't really care if you're mad at me for saying that. Um, and especially in the neighborhood where I live, I mean, typically we give out like 500 pieces of candy 500 and 900 pieces of candy or something it's right crazy. we live in this like you know and the houses are dense so it's really good trick-or-treating over here i love it i freaking love halloween right i'm so into it it's my favorite thing the only thing i don't like is when the racist moms are like i don't know why all these and dads let me start over everyone in the whole city comes here to like get their candy you know, and they're like mad about it. Like they're mad that they have to spend extra money on candy because we're like a high traffic candy neighborhood. Meanwhile, I am so happy that I'm bilingual so I can like chop it up with the with the families that come through that speak Spanish. And sometimes we will give a little shot to the parents as a little, you know, we used to do jello shots. It was a very fun time for us. Uh, but anyway, this year, hell's to the no. Our shit's off. Like, I put up a sign. Like, we're going down in the basement. Like, it's like a whole thing. Because we feel like people are going to be trick-or-treating, and we don't want them to. And we're not going to even remotely encourage it. We're not leaving candy out. We're not, you know what I mean? We're not doing that. Dude, our rates are, like, all over the world. It's not just here, you know? It's- yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, South Dakota is basically the worst in the world right now. But, um, and North Dakota collectively Mm. are like the worst rates in the world but um but it's not a problem it's over right we've nixed it donald trump jr did you see that it was insane i i'm sorry like if donald trump wins yeah i just cannot believe yeah like how crazy are people? Like, how stupid are you they? You know what like, blows I just don't understand. my mind, though? Explain is like, it to me. No, what blows my mind is that 80, 80 to 90 percent of polls right now are saying, are predicting that Joe Biden is going to win. And we we are so gun shy from 2016 that that is not enough of a margin of victory for us to be like, OK, it's going to be all right. We're going to get But they're going to contest it. Yeah. He's going to contest it. Can try. 
and he owns the Supreme Court. And they're going to, you know what I mean? Like, our this is the collapse that I've been talking about, okay? So, let's get into the fall of America. Well, okay, so part of, um, part of the reason we're doing this episode, obviously, we haven't done an episode in a while. And, and part of that was because we were doing the live episodes, um, which were great. We were partnering with um, Kira and Jared and some of our local elected officials like the clerk and recorder and Polly. Thank you again, Paul Lopez for joining us. So uh, <laughs> those were a lot of fun. If you missed them, um, go check out our Facebook page and watch the videos. So, and we just talked about like having a voting plan, um, what, what procedures and that kind of thing are in place for um, safety during the pandemic and voting safely during the pandemic all of those kinds of things. We also talked about some of the issues on the ballot. And so if you're still stuck, I mean, it's the day before election day. So hopefully, hopefully you're able to figure it out. But, um, you know, hit us up on the off color uh, Facebook page, maybe we can connect you with somebody to help answer your questions. If you're still feeling stuck on some of the issues. But um, yeah, get your ballots in as soon as possible. And, and I, Rebecca, we kind of had this conversation. Um, I don't know whether it was via text or via phone call, but so we had this conversation about how, in a way, it felt somewhat irresponsible to talk about anything other than the election. Mm, yeah. This close to the election. Yeah. You know, we thought we were going back and forth. Maybe we could do an episode about this. Maybe we could do an episode about that. And every time we started to really try and plan for it, it was just like, why why like we really should be encouraging as many people to vote as possible and talking about the mm -hmm. issues and getting everything that's going on recorded for mm, posterity for pos sake. yeah for posterity for my, sake for my posterior <laughs> but anyway carry on yeah yeah so i mean we really have been focusing on the election and the, originally there was a plan to do a third um live episode about voting and it was going to be kind of like hey procrastinators don't forget turn in your ballot like let us answer your questions but my goodness the early turnout for voting has been so insane that i'm like i don't even even people who traditionally procrastinate are like no I'm getting my ballot in. <laughs> like, no, even me. Yeah. I, well, I don't procrastinate, but I usually like to do it on election yeah. day for some reason. I think it has to do with like the dot running my girls and all yeah. that. I'm like, oh, you know, so we kind of like that. Uh -uh. We turned ours in early. We turned ours in like, I don't know, last week, I think. But like, I, I've been feeling like that. I see people saying they sell their ballots out and I'm like, no, 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 just turn it in. Just like turn it in now. Yes. Like, no, turn it in now. Don't wait. Yeah. And then because people miss it and they miss getting to the ballot by seven on Tuesday. And then this, this thing is, is we're in Colorado and I want to be, and I know we have listeners like all over the world and, you know, different states and every one is different. Um, but here you can register to vote on election day you can still register to vote you can still vote like so if you look at your registration and you see you're not registered or if all of a sudden you like thought maybe you weren't going to vote maybe you just woke up out of a coma you know what i mean like who knows what if for whatever reason you can still vote on you can register and vote on election day i don't recommend it and i i've done it that's why i don't recommend <laughs> it like but only but i did it before you there was all the mail-in ballots mm. So it was, but it was still pretty easy to vote in Colorado. I just remember it being like, no big deal. Like I, cause I wanted to vote in the presidential election. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of presidential elections. See. Yeah. I want to talk about, let's take it back to 2016. Dun, 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 dun. dun. I, I think that's part of why I have so much anxiety is because I remember very, very vividly. That night, the day after, the week after, I felt some kind of way, and I I ended up recording a little bit about how I was feeling. And at the time, I had mm. I had no idea I was going to get into podcasting four years later or anything like that. I just was like, it was it was the Lord, girl. Uh, the Lord spoke to you. Yes, 
The Lord spoke to you. And I just... Well, why don't you hit yeah, it? Yeah, I just felt like I needed to get some things off my chest. And um, you haven't heard this before. Any of this audio. I have not. Which I... Yeah, I'll just kind of let it speak for itself. So I, I'm going to play a little bit and then we're going to talk about it. Uh, this was on November 9th, 2016. I think this is one of the first times in my life that I feel legitimately afraid for the future. I I don't know when it's going to happen next, but I don't want to forget how this feels because... When I look at the people around me, I don't know how many of them are thinking things, violent things, dangerous things about me and the way that I live. But for the first time, I have a legitimate fear that even if somebody was thinking these things, they would actually act on it because the people who are in power in our government won't stop them. They won't see anything wrong with gay bashing me or sexually assaulting me. I just, I don't know what's coming next. I knew, I knew what was coming next. I'm like, we're going to die, everybody. So, wow, Janice. I mean, I know that I'm so glad you recorded that. It's so um, interesting to hear it from like your, your, just your voice t- saying it. Cause I have my, can I share mine? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, of course. So my, this is a blog post that I wrote and it, the title of it, cause I have this blog called Denver Bitch. It's like a live journal, you know, and I used to, I had a, a very steady readership of one that was my mother and, you know, she's deceased. So I just don't really use it that much anymore. But here was it. The title of it is Denver Bitch Contemplates Trump's America. I've seen reports of racist incidents and have seen posts from teachers and parents about the fearful questions children are asking. Will he make us go back to Mexico? Will he take my mom away? Will he make us go back to China? Will he get the police on us? I feel fear for myself and for my loved ones. I feel fear for brown, black, gay, and trans strangers I don't know. I feel fear for my America, the country I was born in, that while obviously imperfect, is still my country. The shame I feel that we elected a person that is unsuited for leading the free world is dragging this bitch way down. (laughs) But I have things I want to get off my nasty woman's chest. And while I know my readership has declined dramatically since my mother passed away, She was my most loyal and possibly only reader. I still live in America. Obama is still the president. And I still have freedom of speech. So here are some thoughts from my nasty woman mind. Woo! I'm sickened that my first thought when Trump was elected was, thank God, the Red Rasta, that's my son, came out looking so white. He'll be safe in Trump's America. I'm even sicker that my second thought was, thank God he's not a girl, because America still hates women. Half our country doesn't want me, a woman of color, to be here. Half our country thinks I don't belong in America and they need to take it back from me. I actually feel, sc- I actually feel scared in public and Denver is a pretty liberal place. Maybe my neighbor that leans Republican just didn't see me this morning when I walked into a local restaurant. How could he have missed me in my bright red Adidas jacket carrying my son wearing his bright red jacket to match mine? I'm not so sure. But let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he really didn't see me. Maybe he was busy with work colleagues. Who knows? The troubling thing to me about him possibly ignoring me is that I felt like I wasn't welcome in my local cafe. No one smiled at us. I have the cutest fucking baby in the world and people weren't smiling. Was I imagining it? Maybe. Here's the thing. People of color have all experienced some form of racism pre-Trump. But now when I pass people in the street, I'm wondering, do they hate me? Are they going to mistake me for an immigrant? I'm mixed race, black and white. I'm light skinned and people often ask me what my nationality is or my race or my background on most days, unless I'm with people I already know. I know that my struggle is not the same as darker skinned people of color or a young girl wearing her hijab, but I don't identify as white due to not having white skin. Even if people don't readily identify me as black, they identify me as other. As we sat waiting for our order, the woman next to me smiled at my son and played with him a bit. And I relaxed a little. 
I looked around. Everyone in the restaurant was white. Then the people at the next table joined hands and prayed over their food. And my first thought wasn't, oh, that's nice. They're blessing their food. I thought, oh, fuck, they probably voted for Trump. I wanted to get out of there. Then I started thinking about my friend and neighbor and how her husband voted third party and how much he hated Hillary. And I thought, do I want to be friends with people like that? Are we safe with neighbors like that? In Obama's America, when this friend has made questionable and racist and anti-Semitic comments, I called her out and I thought, I can reason with this person. I can help her understand white privilege and why saying things like that is hurtful. But in Trump's America, I'm thinking, can they dine at my table with my black family and my gay friends? Who do I want to surround myself with in these dark days? I'm fine with people protesting to show their dislike of Trump, but I'm sick of this not my president crap. It's what racist pieces of shit said when Obama got elected, and I think we are better than that. Trump won. That's how democracy works. People voted and he won. He's going to be our president, and even though I believe in democracy, when I think President Trump, I feel physically ill. I have never wept after an election. I have never spent days post-election breaking into tears at my place of employment. Before we had the Red Rasta, I had a terrible miscarriage, which necessitated me having a DNC at an abortion clinic. Now that I have my son, I'm more pro-choice than ever. The scary reality that Trump will be appointing our Supreme Court justices is terrifying. And even though husband continues to reassure me, I'm not reassured, I'm really worried, and I'm mad. I don't want my country led by conservatives. I want all people to have equal rights. I want immigrants and refugees to feel safe and loved here like they can start a new and prosperous life. I want my son to grow up and not be scared that people will find out his parents are both part black. I don't want him to be embarrassed that I can speak Spanish or that I'm a feminist. These are the thoughts swirling around my head right now. I feel tired and afraid and despondent. Okay, that was so long. Sorry, but thank you for listening. Yeah, no, you don't have to apologize. It's funny because I hear so much of like, in different ways, like what I went through and what I was grappling with and what I saw around me in those first few days. And um. Yeah, I I wanted to play a couple more clips because I I think it's interesting, like the parallels of like, we didn't even know each other at this point, right? You know, like, I was barely, barely getting into local politics at this point. We were, we were getting involved with the ditch the ditch, you know, protest to the I-70 expansion because of the effects that they were going to be having on our neighborhood and are currently having on our neighborhood. Um, But yeah, so to think that four years later, you know, we're in we're doing this podcast together and that we were both feeling similar things in our own ways with our own life experiences is just fascinating to me. We were all feeling these different things at that time. We were also not alone. Right. You know? Yeah. And so people from, because like, I'm thinking of the four people that I talked to, one's a black woman, a light skinned mixed race black woman, but a black woman nonetheless. Mm -hmm. And one was, a Portuguese immigrant, one is Asian American, and one is a white, oh, and the Asian one is also queer. And so then we got you too, right? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so like, what are we? We're the marginalized population. We're the people that they hate, dude. So of course we're like feeling afraid. Mm -hmm. So I want you to, to, to play me some more of what, what you said. Um, and also like, yeah, like I'll just, I want to hear what you were thinking, baby Janice. <laughs> yeah, and I was a baby at this time. I was driving also during these clips. I was on my way home from work. I had an hour-long commute at the time, so I had a lot of time to think and process things. But that day, I just was like, I have to get this out of my head. Like, I have to get it down on record so I can come back to it later and see, like, did my biggest fears come true or was I blowing things out of proportion because the media was making it seem like so much of a bigger deal than it actually was or like what happened i'm i'm always curious like what our thought processes look like in retrospect and in context and you know with it being towards the end of 2020 they always say like hindsight is 2020 Mm. so i think this, this is the perfect year to look back on some of what's happened and like really assess where was the fear legitimate was it was it not legitimate? Um, w- was it worse than we thought it was going to be? And and I think it's a mixture of all of those things. Like no one really could have predicted that we would be where we are now. Yeah. So I after I kind of ranted for a little while. Play it, bitch. Oh, sorry. <laughs> after I ranted for a little <laughs> while, I uh, 
I, I started talking about this. I guess I feel a little bit like crying, mostly like screaming. Um, but mostly I want to do something. I just, I have this deep urge inside of me to just do something, run away, go fight, go struggle against something, show that I'm not just a victimized bystander in this process of helping our country become something better. And not just our country, but humans in general, to stop fearing each other, to stop hating each other, to live side by side and have some sort of acceptance for each other. Mm. Oh, you should definitely leave that in. That (laughs) is real. No, I'm serious, because let me tell you something that I think I or I hope it has been on people's minds more. It's been on my mind now in a way that it never was before, even growing up, you know, with my life experiences and knowing the stories of my family and all these like really terrible things, you know, and and knowing the history of this country, all of that, I still don't think it was until the pandemic where I was like, really like, oh my gosh, like we, we're doing this all wrong as like a species. And like, I keep thinking it's like, because people, uh, one of the arguments people make for like Trump, I think too, or, you know, colonization and genocide and there's, they're like, well, that's just how humans are. That we're like violent, uh, domineering creatures and we'll always try to like dominate each other. Um, however, we are now, we've almost, it's almost like we advance like too much or something. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I kind of see where you're going with that. We get a little bit ahead of ourselves and then... And then not everybody is on the same page. So then it creates this like this tension between like people who are like at a certain point and people who are not. So I got really into philosophy over the last year. And so I've been reading about like stoicism and Maslow and um, all kinds of things. And one of the things that Maslow talks about is the hierarchy of needs, right? So like if we are all at the point where we're all fighting over food, or there is a lack of food and some of us have food and some of us do not. Yeah, like there's going to be tension. We're going to we're going to have to fight with each other. We're going to compete over those resources, right? But if everybody has their basic needs covered, then what we start fighting about is intellectual stuff. We're not tempted to go into that like authoritarian like we must control in order for everybody to not just kill each other kind of thing. And this is illustrated really well in the new Hunger Games book that came out during the pandemic. Mm. Uh, That book, I highly recommend it. I love it. Oh my God. But let me tell you, reading that with the Mary Trump book, those two together... Mm -hmm. They had they had me revamping my entire parenting style. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm trying to I'm trying not to raise a mass murdering white monster. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because I mean Sorry. she's carry on. No, the the author specifically mentions at the end of the book that like the characters were modeled after the specific approaches to um human nature, what what we assume mm-hmm. human nature is, and then like how you would need to create a government in order to rule over or to like organize humans based on that human nature and um i found it really fascinating and you know she tried to really drive the point home that like any of us in in a certain situation would become violent when and maslow's whole thing is it's like yeah we would become violent because we're we're arguing about our basic needs but once we get kind of beyond that if we could do like a universal basic income or that kind of thing we would bump up what we're competing over and what we're talking about to a point where like we wouldn't be inherently violent um when it comes to like debating about how we move forward as a species um yeah i mean i guess i mean in some ways now that you say that i think about like modern i guess like modern society mm -hmm. right like currently in general Mm -hmm. right now in the united states of america we don't need to club people over the head to like get food even our most vulnerable members of society 
are typically able to go to a, a soup kitchen, a shelter, right. or beg for money. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what I'm saying though. Like, like we people can get food without like killing someone for food, right? However, they will kill each other for a feeling of um, belonging and acceptance, mm. Uh, mm. and that is according to Maslow still one of the basic needs. You know, so that that right. people join um, criminal organizations for that sense of belonging in a community and do things that they probably would not normally do to prove that they belong in that in group. And that if we can be more accepting and open as a society, then we wouldn't have as much of that. I do wonder if that, how like true that is. I, and I'm, I guess I'm always seeking like examples, like historical examples mm-hmm. of societies that where that happened, where that worked, where, where there wasn't always, um, what's that book? I think it's Octavia Butler. The her, Well, it, it, it happens but- in, um, I always want to say Sweden. It's probably not Sweden. One of those um, Nordic, Nordic fin, fin, what, like Finland countries. Yeah. Yes. No, no, no. So I'm saying though, because even though you're saying, even though that's true, mm-hmm. because right, because you know my husband is is part Finnish, and mm-hmm. so he and he's into that, mm-hmm. and so like I know a lot about Finland and like the education system there and all this stuff. But those are these are like these like. Uh, homogeneous populations that in addition if you start digging into that you'll see that they treat their african refugees and shit just as shitty as any other white people Mm -hmm. you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so like that is and you know we're seeing that rise of nationalism and, Mm -hmm. and white supremacy all over the world right now i hope it's a death cry you know yeah swan like some i read it there yeah, there was a tweet. There was a tweet like back way, like a lot, you know, and they were like, no, racism, when a thing is dying, it cries out, it reaches out. And that's like racism because, and, and, and I can see how you could try to like hold on to that and believe it because like the proof is sitting right. The proof, you're listening to the proof. <laughs> right. Right. Like uh, for, you're listening to a half black, half white person talking to a white person that she loves. <laughs> right. That's like a family member. That's been taken care of. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, so we're proof that it's that, yeah, like people don't want like a fucking racist, awful society. But Donald Trump made me not sure. Yeah. And I think now we're getting deep, girl, not, you know, but I'm like, I think that's like really what it was. I was like, shit, like I didn't, like I knew America was really racist and messed up. And I think that Donald Trump getting elected just confirmed it so much for me that I couldn't even like, I mean, I was literally. And I still am. Mm-hmm. I'm like afraid of my neighbors. I don't think that like my realtor neighbor back there is going to like burn a cross on my lawn or hurt my family. No. But I'm not convinced he didn't vote for Donald Trump. Right. I don't know if I'm going to keep this in the podcast, but I, I wanted to get it off my chest. Um, You saying that reminds me of the feeling that I get when my mother says that, you know, oh, I love you and your passion for, you know, I know that she cares for me. I also am almost 100% positive that she will be voting for Trump. Bitch, how you even deal with that? And like, I think I'm about to send this episode to your mother. You put this in. <laughs> I would put it in because I think your mama should know. Yeah. Like, um, I've met your mom over FaceTime when she came to visit. Remember? And yep. I sang your praises because you are, yes. I mean, you're a lovely person, Janice, but you Thank already you. know that. So <laughs> I think, though, like, I don't understand how your mother, knowing what Donald Trump is about in this case, in any case, really, could vote for him. I just don't, I don't understand it because I knew people that voted for Trump or voted third party um, back in 2016. Mm -hmm. And those, that's one of the, that was like our first episode of Off Color, you know? Mm -hmm. It was the first episode was about not wanting to be friends with people that I felt like enabled Trump or uh, supported that. And so Mm -hmm. like, I can't imagine like anyone in my family voting for Donald Trump. We haven't directly had a conversation about the fact I think that it's she's time. voted for Trump. However, we have Girl, had... let's call her now. Let's put her on the show. No. 
However, we have had other conversations. I, I don't remember if I mentioned these in, in, in past episodes. I may have and then edited them out. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I know in past conversations, she's said things along the lines of like, well, it's a, a means to an end, right? Like she's not a fan of Trump, but having a Republican in the White House is a means to an end for all of these other things. And what I've started to learn in all of this philosophy that I've been doing is that it's not the end that's the point. It's the means that's the point. Yeah. Right? We could do a lot of things politically by having an authoritarian government that just tells people what's the best way for them to live and all these things. We could do that. But what's the point if in order to get to that, you have to kill people that disagree with you or allow people who disagree with you to suffer? That that defeats the purpose, right? You know, so it's like, okay, you want to get to X point in in policy or law, but in order to do that, you have to step on the rights of all of these people in order to get there? You've completely missed the point. I think you shouldn't be afraid to 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 have these these kinds of conversations with your yeah. family. And the yeah. only reason I, I and I say it kind of cavalierly because I feel like I only have one person in my my family that I is a known Trump supporter. And he mm. is not white. He is he is black. He's on Ken's side of the family. And I think it's really annoying that that's who he is. And it's like, so I have empathy for you. Like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, this is something, but it's different when it's your own mother. I mean, damn, like, this is just my cousin by marriage, you know? I, like, it oh. was my dad, too. And, like, he didn't get to live to see all of this and get to this point. So, you know, it's like. But he did. But he did. Because guess eh. what? Yeah. No matter what you believe, like, or what people believe, there is one thing that I know is, like, 100% true, that you, your daddy's sitting right there inside your body. Like, you are him. (laughs) I mean, no, really, like, because our children are our our ancestors' wildest dreams, as they say, right? And Mm -hmm. especially on Halloween. The veil is very thin right now. Do you know I've said that like seven times today and I think that's very (laughs) funny. I'm like, okay. Oh, I'm going to do a tarot reading. Oh, okay. We'll do it at the end. Let me play okay. one. Uh, let me play another clip for you because I, I think it might lift our spirits a, little, a okay. little bit. Okay. I guess if this election has any kind of silver lining I've been able to find, it's that voting is powerful and the system does work. It's not rigged. It's not impossible to change things. Voting is powerful even when you think you are the only one voting for what you believe in. I mean, we saw that all night in election results that states that we thought for sure we're going to go to the Democrats didn't. States we thought for sure would go to Republicans were closer than we expected. Um, And in some cases, it came down to thousands if not hundreds of singular votes that made the difference in an entire state which made it a a deciding victory in an entire election and we need to realize that our decisions and the way we use those votes needs to be taken seriously and done intentionally and done intelligently because I just at this point I wish another election was tomorrow so I could stand up and scream and shout and yell and vote and say you know what god damn it this is not the way I want this country to go I want people who are thinking differently and stand for something noteworthy stand for something stand for justice, stand for equality, stand for all of these things that I also believe in could be empowered to somehow balance out what it is that's going on. Mm. 
Guess what? There is an election tomorrow. Guess hey. what? Hey. hey! Hey! So there is an election tomorrow, so make sure you vote. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, voting is voting is powerful, right? Like... I mean, but people will lead you to think that it's not powerful. And for me, and people are always like, I'm bending with my girls. I'm like, that movie is amazing. You all are going to plot. I can't wait for you to see it. Yada, yada, yada. However, it showed me, though. I saw it. I saw people win over money. I saw the votes. There were people supporting Candy that they couldn't give her money, so they voted for her. You know, even if they didn't volunteer, even if they like they voted for her. And I feel like like that's basically what I'm giving Joe Biden this election. Like I'm like, I'm I'm voting I voted for you. Like at the end of the day, it comes down to the votes. And uh you talked to Tanya, who we've spoken to before, about what it was like to get her citizenship and get the right to vote. Dr. Tanya Rays that we've had on before with the school she she and I had like a talk now. Tanya be talking. We can't put all that on here, okay? But I couldn't stop her because it was all, it was like pretty compelling. You know what I mean? Like it was like a compelling testimony and she needed to 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 give it to me the same way. And now I know what happened to her because it just happened to me with you. She She did the same thing and her fears were also like really, really intense. Yeah, let's let's play some clips from Tanya about her experience. All right, action. So- I could not vote from 2016 because oh I was a, a green card holder and I actually had submitted my paperwork for citizenship on purpose to be able to vote on 2016 because one, uh, after the amazing president that we have had, that we had for eight years, I did not want to go back. And two, I actually was excited about voting for a woman. So the way I lived the the whole like, you know, campaigning and was as if I was going to vote because I thought that my paperwork was going to be ready for me to vote and mm-hmm. it wasn't because everything got slowed down four times longer. So oh. green cards, anything that had to do with immigration already had started slowing down because I don't know if you remember, but the, the government basically closed a lot of times around that time. The election was only in November, but things start being slowed down before that. And, um, you know, it could be one of two things. A lot of people that was just trying to get it done to be able to vote. That is what we were told. At the same time, I think that was literally slowed down. I think, I, I think that's what it was. One, I always believed that people wouldn't elect an insane person. And every time when he talked about women that way, I was like, oh, it's the end of it. And that, 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 I mean, there were so many things that you're like, it's the end of it, and it wasn't. So that was also really scary to see that that was just every time he seemed to get more powerful. And then, so that was also confusing. It was quite ironic studying for my citizenship test and having Donald Trump as a president doing all these things is like, oh, he goes against the Constitution, so they, he can't be president anymore. Of course, he has to be impeached. Of course, like, and then none of it happened. So then he gave me a great sense of lack of safety and trust on what we call checks and balances. So it seems that there's so many loopholes that they just can be found. And so honestly, I've had I'm having a really cynical view in the sense of if he is elected again on what will happen because I think that the last four years were just kind of a test of what how much he could do and I think if he continues you'll feel just so like full on powerful no one can no one can knock me down the other thing is that I don't have any friends that are Trump supporters I have a lot of friends that were either Hillary or Bernie so I also lived it from that perspective of a lot of people that are like oh I'm not going to vote and this is like we need to burn it to the ground before we can um but it that always just felt a very privileged position to be in because the burning into the ground which is I think what we felt through the last four years we see we see we, who suffers the most right like and so to me it was always like no we can't burn it to the ground because burning to the ground it's not 
going to be burning to the ground for everyone, right? So that was something that was always scary for me. So, and I couldn't vote. So I tried to like convince friends to vote and, but it got to a point where people couldn't even talk about it, right? Um, also because being an immigrant, that was uh, really scary, right? There was a lot of sobbing in the house, not just me, my kids too, like, but just realizing, but he lies and he's a bully and he wins. It's like, it was just like this kind of dissonant idea of somebody that is not honest, that is not, you know, everything that we value, that, that we think that is what a president should be, that that wasn't that person. And specifically coming from, our previous president said like even in the little things that like you could see it from little to big was always with an intent of like fairness and justice for all right so that was really like heartbreaking i also speak portuguese to my kids all the time and uh, we start seeing more of this uproar against like people that are different from us independently if they're american or not american right um so that I think that a lot of ugliness, because at the top, it was led with, I mean, evilness and ugliness, honestly, that that just gave permission for a lot of people to just express it and I think grow. Um, and so it became a little bit more stressful, like, you know, like going outside, trying to think, okay, if I'm a star and I'm talking Portuguese with my kids, so and start thinking what if somebody starts verbally attacking us and my kids are young I don't want them to like witness these things or like one of the things that was really um hurtful for me was realizing that my kids also felt that so I travel travel quite a bit for work and I was going to NIH National Institute of Health at the time um, my oldest was six or seven and he actually starts crying and he starts sobbing and saying, mommy, what if Donald Trump doesn't let you come back to us? And that was so hard. And I then start telling him like, oh, don't worry. You know, I, I'm a legal citizen. I'm a permanent resident. Look, I have this card and like, but then in my mind, I knew that some people with the same status of me um, had theirs rescinded. Of course it's, it crossed my mind and always making sure I had all my paperwork always, but I always carried my passport, my green card, my driver's license, everything. And I think that even I, I carry my badge from work and even uh, my letters of invitation to go review to the end. Like I would carry like a whole folder of stuff just in case. So I think there was a lot of grief around that election. and. Uh, and in terms of sense of belonging, these last four years have been really, really hard. You know, I thought for a while that Donald Trump was just a stunt and the things that he said, he didn't really mean them. Like, you know, the wall, I thought he was just saying he was going to build a wall and not try to build a wall. So a lot of the things I thought like, oh, he's just like acting. So he gets like, you know, he gets a reaction and so he's just get elected. And then he's not really going to do these terrible things. And it wasn't an act. He did them all and even tried to do worse, right? So, and, and right now I'm, I'm really scared. And like, I, I'm on, almost avoiding, I already voted and I'm almost avoiding that the election is in a few days because I'm scared the same thing will happen. And I don't know what I'll react. I, I walked my ballot, my mailing ballot, I walked it to the, to the voting post to put it in and I know I was so nervous there and like holding it like so proud and nervous at the same time like what if the wind takes it from you or if like it was like I need to like cast it there and then I got later my we accepted their ballot for, for and then it was like a super proud moment and uh, um, ever since I become um, a, a citizen I vote in every single election from little to small I vote for everything because I think that more than ever it's really important and uh, local elections are super important so like I was really proud to to vote this time around and I hope that 
it will go the right way. I wasn't convinced we were even going to have this election, but I also don't think we're having like a free and fair election right now anyway. You know, there's all these pictures of people waiting in line and like people are like, this is what democracy looks like. I'm like, no, no, this is what voter suppression looks like. You shouldn't have to wait in like an eight hour line to vote. Um, I received my ballot in the mail at my house, sat down, went over it, did a whole like show on the internet about it. Then We just dropped it off to a ballot box by our local rec center. Like, that's democracy in action. The fact that, like, we could just sit down, fill out our ballots, drop it off at a location that is was literally for us, that if you need to walk there, you could. Anyway, my point is, it's easy to vote in Colorado, and it should be this easy everywhere because it is wonderful to be a part of your community and to use your voice, you know, to just make sure that your community is a happening. Yeah. And I, I love that she was so proud to be able to vote. There are so many people that are born in this country that never take the opportunity to vote, even though they've always had that right, and they just choose not to vote. So to hear someone that is working so hard and is so proud to vote is really encouraging. And when I was venting <laughs> back in 2016, I uh, yeah, I voiced some of the same um shock and disbelief, but also a little bit of hope for the future. Uh, Let me see if I can find that. Um, Should be this one. Let's find out. It's all so surreal that in my mind, somebody who is so vicious and scary and dangerous and such a puppet and a media darling and it's a show. It's all just a show. Like, so overblown for no reason and he's just so over the top but the things that he's over the top about are dangerous extremely dangerous if we want that to go away if we want to show young people that this is something that needs to change we need to bring to their attention how powerful their individual voices are and how powerful a candidate that truly stands up for the people really is i know we don't have any candidates that really stand up for the people though running i feel like the candidates that were standing up for the people listen if america was all right and things had worked out how they should have in my opinion you know who would be the president right now who would we be voting for tomorrow Mark Charles. That's, yeah. <laughs> Listen, Mark Charles. I feel really bad about Mark Charles because, like, I stopped, I like, even, like, I stopped retweeting him and stuff because I used to always, like, hype him. You know this. I oh, love yeah. Mark Charles. Mark Charles, baby, if you're listening, we're going to invite you on again because I feel like I still, like, I just, I value his voice and his, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I think he brings such an incredible perspective and I, and I think it's the truth. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the other thing is, mm-hmm. like, all stuff aside, it's like, damn, we got to be doing better. You know what I mean? And so, like, that's what I like about that guy. Anyway. Absolutely. Um, I learned so much from Mark Charles, and I hope that he can get on maybe a presidential cabinet or um, maybe he can run for Congress. We'll see. Um, he he just brings so much knowledge uh, to a subject that most of us have been ignoring for way too long. Um, I mean, we've talked a lot about voting and how powerful voting is, but also voting is just one way of influencing things. But I think speaking up for what we believe in is even more important. And you had a conversation with another first time voter, uh, a young lady from New York, I believe. Uh, Let's go ahead and, and listen to what she had to say. 
Um, hi everyone, my name is Emma Tang. I'm a student here in uh, NYU. I'm a first year and this was my first year voting. Okay, it's first time voting, wow. So I wanted to, to take it back four years. So since you're 18, when you were 14 years old, Donald Trump won the election. Can you kind of like take me back to what was happening for you at that time? Yeah, I went I went to bed early um, on election day or election night and I woke up the next day see, and that was the first time I had seen the results. And I kind of remember just thinking that this must be like the fake news and I needed to find where the real news was, but everyone was reporting the same thing. And so it was very disappointing. Why was it disappointing to you? Why is Donald Trump disappointing? There are a lot of reasons for that. But I think for me, it was kind of transitioning from Obama because that was the first president that I remember being elected. Um, he was elected when I was six years old for the first time. And so I remember having like a memory of, oh, like that's cool. I don't get why everyone's up in arms about um, him being like the first black president. I thought we had more than that. And I just kind of thought like anybody could be president and that America was going in a good direction um, because of Obama, but then we got Trump. And so it kind of shifted my worldview a little bit. Shifted your worldview a little bit. What actions did you take? So I was training as a professional athlete at that time. And I didn't really have a lot of things that I could do because I was also going to school full time. Um, but starting 2017, I started um, doing a lot of like social media activism and I started an Instagram account and it was mainly for me to express my own anger, but now it has nearly like 60,000 followers and it's more of an educational tool now. And now I'm responsible for educating a lot of people about social issues. It evolved to a place where it wasn't just anti-Trump, but, um, understanding that Trump is a symptom of a lot of the systemic issues at stake. And so uh, I think I grew from a someone who just really didn't like Trump and didn't like what he stood for to understanding the deeper issues at hand. I think a lot of people still thought it was kind of a joke after. Like we all thought he was going to get impeached um, or he like wouldn't make it to inauguration. And then like he was inaugurated and he was impeached, but he wasn't removed. But I think for me, my parents were pretty surprised as well. Um, we didn't talk a lot about politics, but it was kind of just, I think, a national shock. As a nation, half of us were very shocked, or actually more than half of us, because Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. Um, it, was, it was kind of just a shock, and I truly did not think that he was going to win. Um, and then here we are. Part of me is really hoping that Biden will win. Um, and I think that there is a very, very good chance that he will. But just like in 2016, I think a lot of us thought Hillary was going to win and that there was absolutely no way Donald Trump could get so much of the vote. Um, and I think now he's got a lot of loyalty behind him, which makes it even more difficult to unseat. But as a young person, I know that a lot of my young people voted the right way and I've gotten every single person I know to go out and vote and vote for Biden so there will probably be some issues with the transition of power um simply because Trump has said multiple times that he wouldn't just give up his seat but and I think it's really difficult because it's not just him anymore but it's like half of the senate who supports him and I don't know, three of the justices. Yeah, and I think people do underestimate how um, bad America has gotten. And I think that when I see a Trump flag, I see a Confederate flag. When I see a Blue Lives Matter flag, I see a Confederate flag. Like, they're all the same things to me. They all mean the same things. And I do think that people underestimate how um, sexist and racist he is. But you've also had four years to witness all of it. And so if you still... Like, if you're still on board with that, check yourself. I mean, I don't even... Do you, like, believe in democracy still? I do. Like, that... To me, that was the point of, you know, the... My thoughts... We saw it played out, right? Everybody said, oh, it's rigged. They are already declaring Hillary the winner. It's it's a done deal. Like, there's nothing we can do about it. And then for Trump to win showed that it's, like, none of this is a done deal. 
Like there's always a possibility of change, right? There's always a possibility of people getting excited about a candidate for whatever reason and like getting them elected. To me, it proves that it's not rigged, that we still have at least some level of democracy. It's unfortunately not the level of democracy we should have because the electoral college is stupid. But yeah, I, I still think democracy can work and that ultimately we are headed in that direction of like one person, one vote, direct democracy. That's what I, well, but that's what we have at, munis- at the municipal level, right? right? Like when we, and that's one of my favorite things about voting is like, you're like, damn, like your vote like counts in that city council election. <gasps> Local elections matter. I'm wearing the t-shirt. Yeah. It's official. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. When there's one person, one vote. Yeah. Then we, we don't end up worse with situations where people are just like flat out buying elections, <laughs> you know, and, and like. They're having to talk to more issues than just like what affects swing states. Anyways, yeah. that wasn't the point of that clip per se, but uh, yeah. But does it matter though? Here's what matters, Janice. Mm. Local elections. Mm-hmm. So make sure that you're not just voting in the presidential race mm-hmm. right now. I need you to go ahead and go all the way down your ballot. Some places your ballot might be a page or two. Some places it might be six pa- pages like ours in, here in Denver, mm-hmm. depending on what um things are on your ballot so make sure you vote all the way down your ballot i can't say that like enough guess what and research too yeah don't just vote because let me tell you i can't stand my city council person okay i don't remember voting for him but i'm sure i voted for him because i voted in that election and he's black mm-hmm. and a democrat mm-hmm and I'm I I didn't know any better. Mm-hmm. Remember what we were talking about? What were we doing back then? You know what? Or what was I doing? Like 2014, even right? Mm-hmm. Like I was not paying this level of attention to things, like paying so close attention. Yeah. And now I have to because it feels like a matter of life and death. Yeah. I mean, <sighs> there's a, an election tomorrow. There's also one next year, and the year after that, and the year after mm-hmm. that. And the year after that, no, the president isn't going to be on the ballot in those, but there are people and issues on those ballots that affect your life probably way more than the presidency. Yes, what happened when Trump got elected scared the crap out of a lot of us because of what could happen long term and probably will happen long term because of all of the Supreme Court nonsense that happened this year. However, Somebody could be, someone could be elected next year to your city council that has a way bigger impact, impact on your day-to-day life than the president ever will. And what happens at the state level, in addition to that, is it also sets precedent for the cases in other laws in other states because we know how it goes right like once a state like new york california these liberal states start doing things other surrounding states do it also Mm -hmm. um and like around you know marijuana that kind of thing Uh, right dude i was shocked when i heard it come out of biden's mouth that he he supports federally decriminalizing marijuana i was like when did he say that in the debate yes he said it Um, out loud i was like Okay, we're to that point. We should have already decriminalized. I know it because I, know. I love marijuana. <laughs> That's like number one reason, and then number two reason is because it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. That's the thing. We could talk all night, Janice. We could, but we can't. No, you're a wonderful person, and I am calling your mother. I'm literally calling your mother. Give me her Stop. number. I'm gonna call her and I'm gonna be like, "Did you vote for Trump? Are you voting for Trump?" We'll find out. State. We will. We're going to find out in about 24 hours. Let me tell you what we're going to find out. Okay. Oh, I'm going to do my election day prediction. Yes. I need to do your tarot reading. We got to do the tarot. I got to do it. I'm going to give you a reading. Stand by. Okay. Wait. Is this for me specifically or is this tarot predictions for the election? It's for both. It's for what you're. It's going to be like an internal. I haven't done a tarot reading in like kind of a long time. What spread are we doing? We picking one card, three cards? Oh, I do a whole thing. Okay. Okay. So this case, though, I've never done a a virtual tarot reading. Mm -hmm. 
Or maybe it'll be Patreon content. Oh my god. If you want to see Janice's tarot reading, <laughs> you're going to need to check out our Patreon. And guess what? Because it's so good, I'm not even going to put it behind a paywall. We'll just put it on the Patreon. But like, you have to go check out the Patreon to see this. Okay? Okay? Oh my god. I'm ready. Stand by. Okay. All right. Well, that's our reading. So I think that actually I'm not feeling as bad as I thought I'd feel at the end of this call. Yeah. My predictions, I know it's going to, it could take a little while to get to that point, but my prediction is that Biden will win. Um, Mm -hmm. There's a 30% chance he could win in a landslide. I don't know if we'll get quite to that point, but I think it'll be Mm -hmm. good. I think it'll be better than we're expecting. And Mm -hmm. I think we will take the Senate and I think that we will maintain the house and Mm -hmm. we're going to get some shit done in the next year. Um, We are headed into uh, Mars coming out of retrograde. So it could take a little bit longer to find all of those results, but Mm -hmm. definitely by the end of next week. um, Janice, I love you. I know it's tough. Yeah. But I just, I think the other thing that we have to remember and kind of like hang on to is tomorrow's not promised for any of us. No, it's not. I Um, also want to remind myself and everyone else that just because the election is over on the 4th and we may or may not have the results we want or do not want doesn't mean that the work stops. Um, We're playing an infinite game. And we have to continue the work to continue progress. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) So I'll see you on the fourth, bitch. All right, baby. I love you. Hang tough, okay? All right. We'll see you later. All right. Peace. All right. Bye. All right. Off Color is a Tan Tigress production hosted by me, Rebecca Henderson, a.k.a. The Tan Tigress, produced and edited by Janice Matsko. For more information on what we do at Tan Tigress Productions, visit us on the web at tantigress.com. Oh, if you like what you've been hearing and you want to support this kind of thing, we do have a Patreon. You can join for as little as a dollar a month. And we really actually encourage most people to join at a dollar a month. And cut. I'll just tell this joke right now. Knock, knock. Who's that? Um, Whiskey. Whiskey who? Whiskey business. Open the door. Oh.